read the Word of God, there are many times that we see God described in various capacities. He's referred to as God, who is our Savior. God is our Father. God is our Creator. God is our Shepherd. And we read all through the Word of God different ways the Word of God describes God and our relationship to God. One of the one, most wonderful things is that God is our Father. Then I think, well, greater than that is He's our Savior. And there's just so many things that as we read the Word of God and we read about God and our relationship to God, most every time the Word of God describes God in some particular way, it tells us that we ought to be worshiping God because God is our Savior, because God is our Father. And it tells us to worship God and give glory to God and honor God and serve God because of all these things that God is to us. This morning we tried to begin looking at the fact the Word of God says that God is our maker. God is our maker. We as a people of God, we need to remember that the Word of God says that we should worship God and serve God. We should bow down, we should kneel before Him because God is our maker. It is God, Psalm 100 and verse 3, everybody knows by heart, part of that verse says that it is God that hath made us and not we ourselves. And so the word of God teaches that we're to worship God because God is our maker. The word of God says in the 118th Psalm in verse 24, this is the day that the Lord hath made, we will rejoice, this is the day the Lord hath what? This is the day the Lord hath made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Every day of our lives, doesn't matter how many problems and troubles we have, we ought to be thankful, we ought to be praising God, we ought to be declaring, this is the day the Lord hath made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Tonight I want us to go back and look at God who made the heavens and the earth. I want us to go back and think about God who is our creator, God who made the heavens and the earth. I want all of you to please remember that the theory of evolution is a lie from the devil. It is, a, it is an attempt to rob God of the glory that's due his great and holy name. If you ever doubt that God is the creator, if you ever doubt that God created the earth exactly the way God says in Genesis chapter 1, if you ever doubt the six literal days of creation, it won't be long till you'll doubt many other things in the Word of God. All of God's Word is either true or it's a lie. There are no exaggerations. There are no things in the Word of God that are not true. God's Word is truth. Jesus declared, Thy Word is truth. And God created the heavens and earth. Go back with me, if you will, to begin. Now, there's a reason... And you'll see this as we go along, if the Lord will help us. There is a reason that we need to think about God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Back up in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 1. I want to just first read a few verses that show repeatedly in Genesis chapter 1 that God created the heaven and the earth, God made. Those are two different expressions that are made throughout the pages of God's word. Is that God made the heaven and the earth and God created the heaven and the earth. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, the word of God says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Come down to verse 7. Verse 7 says, And God made the firmament. Come down to verse 16. Verse 16 says, And God made two great lights. What are those? One of the children tell me, what are those two great lights that God made and put up in the sky, Brother Ryan? Day and night. Okay, he called it day and night. The, the uh, one of those great lights rule the day. What is that, that light that God placed in the sky that ruled the day, that, that he created that rules the day? Sun. That's the sun, and then at night, we have the moon. So he created, God, the word of God says in verse 16, God made two great lights. Should we worship God? Should we praise God because of what God has made? God made this world. Uh, we studied this morning about God made us, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. 
And I ask you to think during the afternoon, which is the greatest miracle that God made you and God made every one of you in this building. God made you and you think about the complexity of your body. You think about all the different parts of your body. Think about your brain and the nervous system. And you think about your heart and the circulatory system. And you think about your muscles and your, uh, and your skeletal system. And all the different parts of your body. The digestive system. Think about all those parts of your body and how they all work together. Brethren, it's a miracle what God did to make your body. You could just take one part of your body. There is no machine. Computers do not compare to the human brain. It's an amazing thing that God could put a heart in you and cause that heart to beat. And for sometimes 70, 80, 90 years, that little heart just keeps on pumping, keeps pumping. Every day it just keeps pumping that blood. Brethren, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And we ought to worship God because He made us. And then I asked this morning at the close of looking at God's Word, which is the greater miracle? God making you? God making individuals, God making human beings, or God making the whole earth. God making the sun and the moon and the stars and all the things he created. Don't answer the question, because I don't want us to argue about it. I just want you to keep thinking about that. Is it a great miracle that God made you? Amen. Is it a great miracle that God made the heaven and the earth, created the heaven and the earth? I want you to notice the wording in verse 16. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. <laughs> I was uh, leaning back uh, in the bed the other night and I looked out the window and I began to look up at all the stars in the sky and I thought about that verse. And he made the stars also. You look at all the stars that are up there and that's all it says. Oh, and he made the stars also. It's a marvelous thing that the Word of God is, is so particular to tell us he made the stars, but it's just almost an addendum. He made the sun and the moon. Oh, and he made the stars also. That's a beautiful expression to me. We ought to worship God because he is the creator of heaven and earth. One of the reasons the devil wants you to believe the, eye of the, the lie of evolution is to take away your desire to worship God who made the heavens and the earth. Come down to verse 20, verse 21 rather. Verse 21 says, And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth with, with which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind and God saw that it was good I look at the birds I love to look at birds I had two birds that we have a batting cage in the yard and two of the birds two doves got caught in that batting cage they were just flying back and forth and I went out there and raised up the batting cage net and it was a beautiful sight to watch those birds fly away. Listen, brethren, God made those birds. God feeds the birds. God tells us, look at what God does. He says, don't worry, you're humans, and you're of more value than many sparrows, and God feeds the birds. Now, if God feeds the birds, God's going to take care of you too, so don't worry. The Word of God says now in verse 25, and God made the beasts of, after their time, the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Verse 26 says, And God said, Let us, now who is the us? God said, Let us make man in our image. Who is the us? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God said, Let us, what's the next word there? Let us make man in our image. Verse 27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Come to chapter 2, verse 2. Well, come to chapter 2, verse 3. Chapter 2, verse 3 says, And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Brethren, it's a wonderful thing that God created the heavens and the earth. And some people say, well, it says heaven. Well, it does in chapter 1, but I want you to know chapter 2, verse 1. Yeah. Chapter 2, verse 1 says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. God created the heavens and 
the earth. God made. God created. And God should be worshipped. Now, if God can create, now see, if you think about and you know and you believe that God created, all that he created, is there anything God can't do? And as we read the word of God, we find many, many places where somebody will be talking and talking about blessings that we have of trusting in God and God being our helper and God being the one that gives us blessings and God's the one that we should fear all those different expressions and connected with each of those expressions will say, now trust in the Lord who's your helper, the helper who made heaven and earth. Each time, let's look at a few of those so you can see that this expression that God made the heavens and earth, that is to reinforce the fact that you and I have every reason in the world to trust in God because He's all powerful and He created the heavens and earth. If He can create the heavens and the earth, He can do anything else that, that we could ever begin to need or desire. Go in your Bible. Well, let's, go, let's first go to Colossians. Turn in your Bible to Colossians chapter 1. Go to the New Testament. Colossians chapter 1. I want you to see in verses 16 and 17. And brethren, when we talk about God creating the heavens and the earth, I want you to know that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, we believe in the triune God. There are people who do not believe that Jesus is God. I want to declare to you very clearly from the Word of God that God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, they are one. Yeah. Was Jesus way back there in the beginning of this world? Was Jesus back there in the beginning, beginning of the world? Can you prove it? Give me a scripture. Anyone give me a scripture that proves Jesus was back there in the beginning? Yes, that's one of many. And the, the Word of God says in John chapter 1, verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Remember that. The Word was God. And then in verse 14 it says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Who is the Word that was made flesh and dwelt among us? That's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the living Word. Now we have the written Word, the Bible, but Jesus is the living Word. And in the beginning, way back there in the beginning of this world, Jesus was back there in the beginning of this world. And that's what's under consideration when he says, and God said, let us make man in our image. Now listen to Colossians chapter 1. Um, again, the word of God here is declaring that Jesus is the one who created and made the heavens and the earth. In uh, Colossians chapter 1, listen to verse 16. And you can back up and start with about verse 10, 11, 12, 13, talking about Jesus, but come down to verse 16. Verse 16 says, For by Him, that is by Jesus, were all things created. All things. Who made all things? Who created all things? Jesus did. God did. That are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrown. Now listen carefully. There are a lot of people that think the origin of the devil is that up there in eternal heaven, there was some war between some angels, and God cast one of those, see, one of those angels up there in eternal heaven, I'm telling you the theory, the, the lie, the, 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 what some people think about the origin of the devil. They think there was a war up there in heaven, because one of those angels decided he wanted to be like God, and there got to be a war, and God cast him out of the eternal heaven, and, and that's the origin of the devil. That's a lie from the devil, brethren. I want you to remember and think about what the Word of God says right here about everything that was created. Colossians 1 verse 16 says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things. And by him all things consist. Everything in this world was created by God. God made it all. Now, Go with me to Psalm 124. I want you to see why it is so important and why it helps us in our lives to know the power of God that was manifest in the creation of this world. To know that God has the power. God said, let there be light. God spoke light into existence. God said, 
In uh, Psalm 124, look in your Bibles please at Psalm 124. Psalm 124, listen to, just listen to the verse 8 for the sake of time. Now listen carefully. Psalm 124 and verse 8, the Word of God says, Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Now do you hear that? Why is it important that he added that expression at the end of this verse? When he says, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Well, it's because when I need help, I need to say, my help, my confidence is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Why? Because when I say what he says here, when I say my confidence and my help is in the Lord who made heaven and earth, that gives me more confidence that he can help me. If I know that he made heaven and earth, do I also know he can help me no matter what my problems are in my life? And so he says, our help, notice the wording, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Why did he add that expression? To remind us of the power of God in creating the heavens and the earth. He made. God is our what? God is our maker. Now, Back up to Psalm 121. Same page in my Bible. Psalm 121, listen to verse 2. And he said in verse 8, he says, Our help, and verse Psalm 121, verse 2, he says, My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. Again, now, and we don't have time to do this, but we can go all the way through the Word of God and show many, many, many times where when the Word of God tells us what God does, it'll say, God who made heaven and earth. Are you glad you have a helper? Now, see, I have a wife. Is she my helper? Mm -hmm. The Bible says that it was not good for man to live alone. And so God made an help for him. And my wife is a great help to me. Is Brother Philip a help to me? Absolutely. Is Brother Richard a help? We have all these different people who help us. But you know who gave us all those helps? You know who gave me my wife? You know who gave us the brethren? You know who gave us our family? It's God. You know where a wife, a good wife comes from? A prudent wife is from the Lord. Who is the one that is the ultimate helper? It's the one who gave me all the other helpers that I have. And this helper that we're talking about made heaven and earth. So when you pass through the rivers, they will not overflow thee because your helper is going to be with you. And no matter what you face in your life, you don't need to worry because your helper is going to be with you. And who is your help? Who is your help? There you are. Thank you, Brother David. You said exactly what I wanted you to say. I didn't want you to say God. I didn't want you to say the Lord. I want you always to, I want all of us to begin to say more and more as we talk about the Lord. We say, the Lord who made heaven and earth. Why? That's what the people of God did in the Bible. They said, the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And then in Psalm 121 verse 2 he says, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Now look at Psalm 115. Psalm 115. Psalm 115. Listen please to verse 15. Psalm 115. I encourage you to go home and read this in its context because the more you read about God who made the heaven and earth, the more you see this is all the way through the Bible. It starts in Genesis chapter 1. It goes through the book of Revelation all the way through the Bible. The word of God repeatedly says this person and this person and this person. They all kept saying, well, he's the Lord. But then they always add this expression, who made heaven and earth. Now in Psalm 115, listen to verse 15. Now remember, what did he say in, in Psalm 124? What's the main reason that he gives in Psalm 124 that we need to remember that he made heaven and earth? What's the main reason from Psalm 124 and Psalm 121? What's the main reason we need to remember he made heaven and earth from those two scriptures? He's our helper. Yes, because he's our helper. And we need to know we've got a strong, omnipotent, sovereign helper. Now, you've got a completely different reason given here to always say that uh, the Lord made heaven and earth. In Psalm 115, in verse 15, the word of God says, Ye are blessed of the Lord which made heaven and earth. Now, think about that. You are blessed of the Lord. You, could, he have, could he have just, could this writer have just put a period there? He could have, but there's a reason that he says, Now you are blessed of the Lord which made heaven and earth. Why does he say that? 
He says that because you need to know that all these blessings you have, they come from the God who made heaven and earth. Who fed the children of Israel? Did they need help? Did they need blessings when they were in the wilderness? Who could feed millions of people out there in the wilderness? Only the God who made heaven and earth. Who made the heaven and the earth. That's the one who could feed them. When they got to the Red Sea, they began to get to the Red Sea and the Egyptian army was behind them. Who was it that parted the waters of the Red Sea? The Lord who made the heavens and the earth. And whenever the Egyptian army got down into that Red Sea and the walls of that Red Sea collapsed and destroyed the Egyptian army, it was the Lord who made the heaven and earth that did that. Now if he has the power to make the heaven and earth, does he have the power to part the sea? If he has the power to, to make the heaven and earth, does he have the power to collapse the sea? You remember when the... Uh, on one occasion, the disciples of Jesus were in a ship and there was a great storm that came up and they were all afraid and Jesus just said three words. What did he say? Peace, Peace be still. And the waves calm right down. You know why? Because Jesus made those waves. He made the ocean. He made the earth and all the seas. And he has the power over all the seas and the ocean and the land and the animals when Daniel was in the lion's den what could stop those lions from eating Daniel the Lord oh yes the Lord who made heaven and earth the Lord who made those lions he could shut those lions mouths and when uh, Elijah was was it Elijah or Elisha that was by the brook Cherith and was starving and was hungry and Needed to be fed. Do you remember that? Elijah or Elisha? Tell me quickly. Elijah. 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 When he was there by the brook Cherith and, and he was hungry and usually, I see I feed birds. I keep bird feed out there in feeders all the time. But you know what God did? He took that bird, he took a raven and sent Elijah food by the bird. Now that's completely backwards from the way we normally think of things. How could that happen? How can a bird feed a man? Well, the Lord did that. The Lord worked in that little bird. The Lord who made the heaven and the earth, He caused that bird to feed that man. How many examples do we have in the Word of God of God doing great miracles where He would take something He had made and cause it to do something that was impossible for it to do? It's because God is teaching us repeatedly, worship Him who made heaven and earth. Give glory to Him who made heaven and earth. Remember that when you need help, the Lord who made heaven and earth is able to help you. He's my help. He's your help. He is our help. And you remember now, this is Psalm 115 verse 15. Look at it again. Psalm 115 verse 15 says, You are blessed of the Lord. You are blessed of the Lord. We're in a season we call what? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. You know where all your blessings come from? Where do all your blessings... How many blessings do you have? How many blessings do you have? The Bible says in Psalm 68, 19, the Lord daily loadeth us with benefits. I've got piles of blessings today. Every day of my life, all these blessings come from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. I need to know it's no big problem to God to provide everything I need. David said, I've been young and I'm now old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. You know why? Because the Lord who made heaven and earth has always taken care of those that trust in him and fear him and love him. Where do your blessings come from? Your blessings come from the Lord. Is that right? That's right, but that's not the whole story. He, your blessings, see, you are blessed of the Lord, I would say it again, which made heaven and earth. Go to Jonah. Oh, Jonah. Do you ever get tickled at Jonah? Or do you ever get mad at Jonah? Do you ever feel anything about Jonah? When I read the book of Jonah, I get all kinds of feelings. I go from... In the beginning, and, and God told him to rise and go to Nineveh. I think, well, that man's going to just arise and do exactly what. And he rose and fled to Tarsus. And I think, what's wrong with you? 
God told you to go to Nineveh. Well, why didn't he go to Nineveh? Because he was, fill in the blank, he was blank of the Ninevites. He was afraid of the Ninevites. They were very wicked people. And so he was afraid to go to Nineveh. Who did he not fear? Thank you, Brother David. God, who made the heaven and earth. He should have been afraid of God. God, who made the heavens and the earth. So he got on his ship to go to Tarshish. And he's fleeing to Tarshish. And on the way to Tarshish, somehow, a big storm came up. Who caused that storm to come up? God, who made the heaven and the earth. And the storm came up. And that ship began to be tossed to and fro. And it looked like they were going to die. And then what happened? Look in Jonah chapter 1. Look please at verse 9. The uh, other people on the ship with Jonah, they began to wonder what caused this. And they cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. I want you to notice what Jonah says now in Jonah chapter 1 verse 9. He said unto them, that is Jonah told the rest of the men on the ship, I am in Hebrew and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which made the sea... And the dry land. Now, I wonder this, and I'm not sure. Did he, did he fear the Lord? Did he just now decide to fear the Lord? I think maybe so. Because if he had feared the Lord when the Lord said, Arise and go to Nineveh, what would he have done if he had feared the Lord back then? And if he had trusted in the Lord back then, the Lord who made heaven and earth, what would he have done when God told him, Arise and go to Nineveh? He would have gone right then. But now he's in the middle of this storm, and do you think he's afraid? Absolutely he's afraid. Does he fear the Lord who made heaven and earth? Yes, he does. Why? Because he has disobeyed God. Brethren, it's a serious thing to disobey God. God can cause the earth to swallow you up. Did he do that many times in the Bible? The Lord who made the heaven and the earth. Can he cause the earth to swallow people up? And can he cause the seas? Can he send storms? Can he send hurricanes? Can he send tornadoes? Can God do all of that? Does God sometimes do that? Yes, he does. Who made all those things? The Lord did. Pow Nature is powerful, isn't it? I was coming back, I went to uh, St. Simon's Island to, to uh, preach at the Christian school there Monday. And I started back uh, from St. Simon's Island, and I've never seen as many lightning strikes right close to me. I mean, it was just boom, 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 boom. And everybody was slamming on brakes, and you could hardly see. Wasn't it Monday, Brother John, or do you remember? I think it was Monday. It was frightening. Where could you hide? Where could you hide? No place to hide. <laughs> you had to do something. If you're going to have peace in your soul, you had to trust in the Lord Amen. who made the heavens and the earth. Is there a good reason to trust in the Lord who made the heaven? Is there a good reason for you to say the Lord who made the heaven and the earth? It helps me remember just how powerful he is every time I say the Lord who made. And there's a reason that Jonah said, I fear the Lord who made the sea and the dry land. What was he looking for right now? What was he wanting God to send him to? He wanted some what? He wanted some dry land. Could God make some dry land appear right there? Could God have just raised up an island right there? He could have. But instead he calls that, he calls Jonah to be cast out in the ocean and a whale swallowed him. How in the world can a whale swallow a man? You can ask any man that knows anything about whales and fish, they'll tell you it is impossible. Number one, it's impossible for a whale to swallow a man whole. And number two, they'll tell you you can't live inside the whale's belly. Only problem is, we're talking about the Lord who made, made the heavens and the earth. And who made that whale? Who made that whale? I want you to come down in your Bibles. Look please at... Uh, let me see, yeah, verse 17. Look at Jonah 1, verse 17. Now the Lord had prepared, ooh, wow, <laughs> God prepared a great fish. You see, everybody follow? And the New Testament, he is called a whale, but God prepared. Now, did that whale, did that whale need some preparation by God before God, before that whale could swallow him? Oh, God prepared the mouth. God prepared the throat of that whale to swallow him. And God prepared the belly of that whale whale that swallowed. It was a great fish prepared by God. You, do you really believe that? Listen, brethren, if the Bible said that Jonah swallowed a whale, I believe that. 
I have no problem with believing that. You know why I have no problem with believing that a whale swallowed Jonah? Because I believe God created the heavens and the earth. I believe God said, let there be light and there was light. I believe God spoke everything into existence. And when I believe in the power of God, I have no problem believing that God could prepare a fish for Jonah. Now what does that make me feel? I don't have any reason to be afraid. If, capital I-F, if I'm doing what God tells me to do, I have no reason to be afraid because who will take care of me? That's good. That's good. Now, you're doing good tonight. What about tomorrow? <laughs> what about a month from now? You know, sometimes when I'm preaching, I think, man, I'm, I'm just not ever going to forget that. I'll just, the rest of my life, and there are a few things I do remember the rest of my life, like talk about going, what we're going to do tomorrow. What, I'll, what do you think I always say when I talk about what we're going to do tomorrow? The Lord willing. If the Lord will, we'll live and do this and that. Well, that's what all of us need to say. And another thing we all need to say is, when you talk about the Lord, say, the Lord who made heaven and earth. You see how many people did it in the Bible? Did Moses do it? Did Moses write it down? The Lord who made heaven and earth. Did Jonah say the Lord who made heaven and earth? Did David in the Psalms, did he write all about another psalmist? Did they write about the Lord who made heaven and earth? Why did they all do that? Because number one is God inspired them to write it. But they were saying it because that gave them confidence to trust in the Lord who made heaven and earth. Now, let's go to the New Testament. Turn to the book of Acts very quickly. And we'll close here in the book of Acts. But look at uh, Acts. First, look at Acts chapter 4. You remember how Peter and John, they have, uh, by the power of God who made the heaven and earth, they have healed a man. Does God have the power today? The same power that he had back there on day one of the creation of this world? Amen. Does God still have that same power? Is he still the Lord who made the heaven and earth? Is he less powerful now than he was then? No. And did he have power whenever Peter and John began to go into the temple? And there was that lame man in Acts 3 that was laying there. And then in Acts chapter 4, they're brought before the Sanhedrin council. And they're warned they better not ever speak in the name of Jesus. And they told them they... We'll look at uh, Acts chapter 4 verse 19. Let me read 18. Acts 4 verse 18 says, And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. Now, if they, if they hadn't believed in the power of God, what do you... Did they know about the power of the Sanhedrin council? Yeah. Did they know about the power that they could have them put to death? Mm -hmm. They knew all about that power, but what did they also know? They knew the power of the Lord who made heaven and earth. So when the men said... Don't you speak in the name of Jesus. If they had just been thinking about those men, they would have been so afraid that it kept their mouths shut. But they weren't just thinking about those men. They were thinking about the Lord who made heaven and earth. So when the men said, Don't you speak in the name of Jesus anymore. Verse 19 says, But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Come down to verse 23. Acts 4 verse 23 says, And being let go, they went to their own company. That Peter and John went to their friends, other Christians. They went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. What did the elders and chief priests say? Don't speak in the name of Jesus. Verse 24 says, And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God which hath made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is. Why were they saying that? Did they need some encouragement? Did they need to feel the strength that comes from the Lord? Did they need some help right then when the Sanhedrin council said, keep your mouth shut? I believe we're going to see the same kind of thing in our lives and I think already, even though government hasn't said shut your mouth, that a lot of churches have told the pastors, shut your mouth. And they've shut their mouths. <laughs> you know why? Because their confidence is not in the Lord. That's right. You think it's important? I want to encourage you the rest of your life. You, when you talk about the Lord, you say, the Lord who made the heaven and earth. What do these people say? The Lord who made heaven and earth. One more, one more example. Turn to Acts chapter uh, 14. Act, we'll close right here. Acts chapter 14. Listen please. Uh, go home and read verses 8 through 15. This is where Paul and Barnabas. Now 
Not talking about Peter and John, talking about Paul and Barnabas, and they also have been blessed to heal a crippled man, just like Peter and John were back there in Acts 3. Now Paul and Barnabas do the same thing by the power of God who... Thank you. Acts 14, verse 15... After these, now you know what the people did when they saw that Paul and Barnabas healed this man? They said, oh, Paul and Barnabas must be gods. This happened more than one occasion. They must be gods. They must be gods. Were they gods? No, they weren't gods. Verse 15, here's Paul and Barnabas' response to them when they said you must be gods. Acts 14, verse 15, saying, Sirs, why do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with you and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. You see, every time somebody gets in trouble they start to talk about the Lord. But they don't just say the Lord. They say the Lord who made heaven and earth. That needs to be a part of our vocabulary that we talk about, that we remember, that we're reminded, and that we remind others. We're not just serving some little God. We're not just serving some little weak God that's begging and pleading and trying, but he can't do something because you won't let him. That's not the God of the Bible. You know that's a God that's preached often today? Oh, Jesus wants to do something. If you'll just let him, you don't find that anywhere in God's word. We're talking about Jesus who created the heavens and the earth. All powerful. And we need to say, Jesus, the Lord, God, who created the heavens and the earth. May God help us to have confidence in our God who is all powerful is my prayer for Christ's sake.